Hello, hello, it's Echo. My main website, echogillette.com, and my online store, echoisweird.shop, are two websites that were both made through the web building platform Wix, who have been lovely enough to sponsor this video for me. So I thought it might be kind of a fun idea to go through and show you kind of like a virtual tour of the Wix editor interface, just so that you can kind of get like a base understanding of what kind of capabilities Wix has. I'm just introducing you to the Wix editor. And then we're gonna go through and we're gonna make a secret page on my website so that you can kind of see all of these tools in action. So first of all, Wix has two main methods for making websites. There's the ADI design tool and then there's also the Wix editor. The ADI tool is really great because it can make a website in like 10 minutes. But for this video, we're gonna be going through the Wix editor, which is a more complex tool belt. Okay, so this is the Wix editor. We're gonna start by briefly touching on everything that's in the toolbar. The first Dropbox gives you a list of all of the pages on your website. Next, you have the desktop and mobile preview. These are very important. When you're designing your website, you always wanna start with desktop first, and then always check what it looks like on mobile because sometimes the design elements don't translate and you need to adjust them. The size of that header may look great on a desktop, but when you look at it on your phone, it might be way too big or way too small. It's also useful to know that when you're editing in the mobile version, it doesn't affect your design choices on the desktop version. The site tab just has a bunch of useful links like save, publish, edit, and exit. The settings dropdown is also something very important that you want to kind of pay attention to. Having a mailbox is really good for your business. Um, you should always make sure to add a favicon. For anyone who doesn't know, a favicon is that little icon that is on the tabs of your web browser. Rules and permissions is very useful if you have other people who are going to be working on the website with you or writing things for you. It lets you give people access to your site without giving them complete and total control over it. You can also add an error page from here and access your dashboard. The tools tab is where you'll access the visibility of all of your fancy tools. So if like you accidentally, oh no, close out of that toolbar, you can just go to tools and make it visible again. Dev mode. If you are a person who wants to add custom code and actually poke at the bones of your website, this is for you. I have not coded a website in years and I don't plan on doing it anytime soon. So for anyone out there who actually does enjoy code, this is for you. Whatever your comfort level of website building is, Wix has something for you. But developer mode is not for me. And then of course there's a help tab which gives you access to keyboard shortcuts and videos just in case I'm not explaining things clearly enough. There's tons more information out there. It's all right there. And then the very last tab is upgrades. This is just a link to the plan that your Wix account is currently on. If you want to upgrade, there's a shortcut link to it there. So at the very top middle of the page, there's this tiny little bar. And if you click it, it will hide the controls. This kind of acts as a quick preview so that you can get a look at your page without having to leave the editor. If you are completely overwhelmed or you just feel like you really cannot manage your own site, you can hire a partner. There is a fancy button that you can click to get matched with a professional. If you want to zoom out and see the entire length of the page at once, you can click the zoom out and reorder button, undo and redo naturally. Save is so that you can save your progress without making everything you're working on public. Preview is so that you can see what the front end of the website looks like if you were to visit it. And then publish of course makes it fully accessible to the world wide web. So now let's talk about everything you have access to on the left hand side. Menus and pages is how you add and control pages. Background controls the background of the website. Add lets you add strips and objects and text. Add apps, you can add applications. Media like pictures, images, and icons, both the old and new blog formats, a section to help you run your online store, email marketing, and content manager. Now let's cover some of the tools in the toolbar. Your toolbar should be located on the left hand side. If you don't see it, just go to tools and check toolbar. If you click and hold the dots in the top middle, you can move your toolbar around and place it wherever you feel most comfortable. If you ever forget what any of these tools do, you can click this little question mark in the corner and it will pull up a window with a summary of what every tool does. We have cut, copy, paste, do Duplicate, delete, arrange, align, distribute, match size, rotation, size, position, and show all on page. A lot of these can be really helpful when you're fine tuning your web page. For example, I forgot to center all of these elements, so we can just do that real quick right now. And now they are. So now that you kind of know where everything is in the interface, we can go ahead and make a new page and try some things out. So now, in order to add a new page, we're gonna start by going to the menus and pages section. So here you can see kind of the basic layout of my website with all of the pages and where they're nestled underneath. My commissions and webcomic page are connected under my art page, and then my shop page is actually a link to another website. We're just gonna go ahead and add a practice page. So we're gonna make a new page and we're gonna just call it practice, and then drag that to the very bottom of the list. So as you may have noticed, 
This new page is not completely blank. It still has the same header and footer that I designed for the rest of the website. Whatever work you do with the header and the footer will be consistent throughout your entire website. It's only the content between that that will be different from page to page. If you'll notice when I click the header, it becomes highlighted and orange. If I click the footer, it becomes highlighted and orange. And if I click the page, it becomes highlighted and cyan blue. Anything that you edit in the orange sections will be edited for the entire website, whereas anything you edit between the two blue lines will only affect this page. Right off the bat, as soon as we click the page section, we're given a couple options, such as change page background, design, and connect to data. If you click change background, it's just going to open the background section. Let's change the background just for the sake of this one page. How about some pineapples? Let's just throw some pineapples on there. Next I'm going to adjust the page height by dragging down the little page height clicker on the bottom. Personally, I like to work in strips because I feel like it helps organize sections on your page. So the first thing you're gonna do is go to add strip and then choose a section. I'm gonna start with a welcome strip, just kind of as like a title and intro to the page. And then from there, we're gonna change everything. Now I want to completely change this background image so in order to do that I'm just gonna click on the strip and then right above it click change strip background and we're just gonna make it a nice bright red and then we're just gonna change that to the page. If you want to edit your text all you have to do is double click or single click and then click edit text and then we can change it to practice page. I also want to kind of separate it a little bit from the header so I'm just gonna pull it down a little. Now we're cooking with fire. Now we're going to add another strip, but we're just gonna add a classic plain white section, but I want it to be slightly transparent. So this time we're gonna change the background, make the color white, and then in the settings, we're going to lower the opacity to 50%. Now we have a partially transparent background. I'm gonna actually stretch this one all the way down to the footer. And now we're gonna start adding some other fun elements and objects. There's a lot of different stuff that you can add to your page. I definitely recommend kind of experimenting and just going through the list to see what we're capable of because there's way more stuff than I could possibly cover in this video. The ones I personally probably use the most are strip, box, text, image, and gallery, but you can add all kinds of things. You can customize your social links, add music, contact forums, different types of input sections. You can add a blog. First thing I'm gonna wanna do is add a box. Select the type of box I want to use. There's so many designs. Now I'm gonna go ahead and decorate it a little bit with a shape. Under the shape tab, you have lots of lines, arrows, basic shapes, themed lines. So let's just add a basic heart shape and then change the color. And then from here, I wanna add some text, just a title and a paragraph. Let's do tall title. I think the black text works for this. If you double click on your text box, it will take you into the text settings so you can change all of the formatting stuff. And then from there, I'm just gonna tighten up the layout a little bit so it's a little more clean. And then if we click the zoom out button, we can see kind of the whole page all at once. So now that I have a bunch of basic elements on this page, I can show you why it is extremely important to always check what your site looks like on mobile. If we go up to the top and click switch to mobile, you can see the mobile preview. So the auto-generated mobile version of this is okay. There's not too many problems with it, but there are some things that we do need to fix. For starters, the practice page section is way too tall. It needs to be brought down just a little bit and pull that whole thing up to about here. The vector art heart that I put on this box has been dropped down to the very bottom of the page. So we're just gonna go ahead and drag that up to the middle section. And it's just gonna be kind of like a little divider. Now the text in the bounding box at the bottom of the page are all right, but I feel like they would be a little bit more legible if they had some space around the sides. So we're just gonna pull all of that stuff in a little bit. Now it's just a little bit cleaner. Oh, it made the rag a lot nicer too. Now, if we switch back to the desktop version, you can see that it's still exactly the same. Changing everything on the mobile side didn't affect anything, except the mobile side. Wix has a lot of capabilities. There's a lot that you can do with the Wix editor. This video is just meant to be kind of like a basic introduction so that you can kind of have a feel for what it's going to be like before you go into it. There are so many more things I could add to this. I could add gallery and contact forms and all kinds of things. But this video is just meant to be kind of like a basic introduction to the interface. I hope that helps. If you want to create your own website, you can go to wix.com slash go slash echo Gillette 
or just click the link in my description if you don't feel like typing. I think that's everything I have for you today. If you make a website on Wix, please send it to me on Twitter so that I can go poke around your websites. At Echo is weird. I think that's everything I have for you for now. I'm gonna go ahead and give you 748 awesome points for making it all the way to the end of this video. I hope that you have a lovely day and that I will see you later. Goodbye. I love you a lot. Thank you for watching my videos. Bye!